All right, in the last section, we discussed uh, problem solving strategies. So we're going to go through the examples. Um, and that's this slide. A long jumper leaves the ground at an angle of 20 degrees above the horizontal and at a speed of 11 meters per second. How far does he jump in the horizontal direction? Okay. Uh, Conceptualize. Now, this happens to be Ashton Eaton at the 2016 Rio de Janeiro Olympic Games. Uh, I didn't recognize him. I just saw it from the from the figure in the book. Um, his arms and legs move in a, in a complicated way, but we will ignore this. We're going to model the long. We're going to model him as a particle, and conceptualize his motion as equivalent to that of a sim simple projectile. Uh, we categorize this example as a projectile motion problem because the initial speed and launch angle are given and because the final height is the same as the initial height uh, we further categorize this problem as satisfying the conditions for which the equations for the range and maximum height of a projectile can be used this approach is the most direct way to analyze this problem and although the general methods uh, that have been described will always give the correct answer uh, analyze. We find the range of the jumper using the range equation. The range equation is R equal V initial squared times sine two theta initial divided by G. So if you put in the numbers, you get 7.94 meters. Okay. Uh, what is the maximum height reached? Um, well, to find the maximum height reached, um, we use the height equation, V initial squared sine squared of theta initial um, over 2G. And if you put the numbers into that, you get 7.22. Um, now to finalize, we, we try finding the answers to parts A and B using the general method. The results should agree. Uh, treating the long jumper as a particle is an oversimplification. Nevertheless, the values obtained are consistent with experience in sports. We can model a complicated system such as a long jumper as a particle and still obtain reasonable results. Okay, let's look at another. Uh, oh, and we're going to do, we're going to, I'm going to show you a video of this in action. It's a little hard to reproduce in our lab. We don't have the equipment for it, but. Uh, um, I'm going to show you a video, video. I forget where it's, uh, I forget if it's MIT or uh, Harvard or, or one of their physics departments. Uh, a bullseye every time is called. In a popular lecture demonstration, a projectile is aimed directly at a target in such a way that the projectile leaves the gun at the same time the target is dropped from rest. Show that the projectile hits the falling target as shown in the figure. Um, the velocity of the, the caption, I guess you would call it, says the velocity of the projectile, the red arrows, changes in direction and magnitude, but its acceleration, the purple arrows, remain constant. Um, okay, conceptualize. We conceptualize the problem by studying the figure. Notice that the problem does not ask for numerical values. The expected result must involve an algebraic argument. Let's categorize this. Because both objects are subject only to gravity, we categorize this problem as one involving two objects in free fall. The target moving in one dimension and the projectile moving in two dimensions. The target T is modeled as a particle under constant acceleration in one dimension. The projectile P is modeled as a particle under constant acceleration in the y direction and a particle under constant velocity in the x direction. Okay, let's analyze. The figure shows that the initial y coordinate, uh, y sub i t uh, of the target is x t times tangent theta, and its initial velocity is zero. It falls with acceleration a sub y equal to g, nine, minus g, uh, minus 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, we write an expression for the y coordinate of the target at any moment after release, noting that its initial velocity is zero. And that would be this equation, yt equals y initial t plus 
uh, zero t minus one half g t squared equals x t times tangent theta i minus one half g t squared. Okay. Um, right expression. Uh, oh, I think I uh, already did that. Um, Write an expression for the y coordinate of the target at any moment after release, and that's that one. Uh, write an expression for the, why is there a zero there? Why is zero t? Because v initial is zero. That's why there's a zero t there. Um, okay, write an expression for the y coordinate of the, projectile, of the projectile at any moment. And so if we do y of the projectile equals y initial of the projectile plus y, uh, the y component, the initial y component of the projectile times t minus one half gt squared. Uh, well, the y, y initial is zero. Uh, the initial velocity is vi p sine theta i you know, times t times time minus one half gt squared. It's just a it's just a constant a gravitational acceleration problem, and so you get vi of the particle sine theta i times t minus one half gt squared. Um, now let's write an equation for the x coordinate uh, of the projectile at any moment. Well, xp, uh, x of the projectile is equal to x initial p, which is back at the zero, plus xip times t, v, I'm sorry, v x of by, of the uh, projectile times t. So the initial position is zero and the velocity is uh, v initial of the particle times cosine theta. In other words, it's the horizontal component of the initial velocity times t. So we end up only with vip uh, cosine theta i times t. Um, now solve this expression for time as a function of the horizontal position of the projectile. And so time is equal to uh, xp divided by vip cosine theta i. Uh, and we substitute this expression for time as a function of the horizontal position of the projectile. Uh, so we see that th that's equal to t. So if we substitute, I don't know if you can see my little cursor. If you substitute up here, uh, VIP sine theta I times T, we substitute that T, the, the XP over VIP cosine theta, uh, minus um, one half GT squared. Uh, we come up with uh, XP tangent theta I. Why tangent theta? Well, you see you have a sine theta I and a cosine theta I in the denominator. Um, and you get uh, xp tangent theta minus one half gt squared. Okay, uh, let's see. And so that's that's the algebraic equation. Um, when you compare the equation for yt and yp, we see that when the x coordinates of the projectile and target are the same, that is when x sub t equals x sub p, their y coordinates are the same in a collision. The collision results. Okay, all right. Here's another problem. Uh, a stone is thrown from the top of a building upward at an angle of 30 degrees uh, to the horizontal with an initial speed of 20 meters per second as shown in the figure. The height from which the stone is thrown is 45 meters above the ground how long does it take the stone to reach the ground? Now, this is not one of those problems where the initial height is equal to the final height. Um, conceptualize. Study the figure in which we have indicated the trajectory and various parameters of the motion of the stone. It's 20 meters per second, initial velocity thrown at an angle of 30 degrees. We categorize this problem as a projectile motion problem. The stone is modeled as a particle under constant acceleration in the y direction and a particle under constant velocity in the x direction. So uh, let's look at the equations. Let's analyze this. We have the information x sub i equals y sub i um, equals zero and y final equals minus 45 meters 
a sub y equals minus g minus 9.8 meters per second squared, and v initial equals 20 meters per second. Um, the numerical value of y final is negative because we've chosen the point of the, of the throw as the origin, in other words, the top of the building. Uh, find the initial velocity, find the initial x and y components of the stone's velocity. And if we do that, it's just a simple vi cosine theta and vi sine theta. We have 17 meters per second and 10 meters per second um, for the vxi and vyi uh, respectively. Express the vertical position of the stone from the particle under constant acceleration. So the position y final equals y initial plus VYT minus one half GT squared. Uh, we substitute the numerical values. Uh, minus 45, that's where it's going to, that's um, X final equals zero plus 10 meters per second times T times one half minus 9.8 meters per second squared times T squared. Uh, this will get you all meters, meters per second times time will give you meters and meters per second squared times time squared will give you meters. Um, and if you work that all out, the time is, uh, if you solve for T, um, solve the quadratic equation for T, you come up with 4.22 seconds. Okay. Um, What is the speed of the stone just before it strikes the ground? Now, ordinarily in these uh, situations where the final position and the initial position are the same, the final velocity equals the initial velocity just in the negative direction. Um, let's analyze this. You use the velocity equation in the particle under constant acceleration model to obtain the y component of the velocity of the stone just before it strikes the ground. And so Vy final equals Vy initial minus GT. Um, we substitute the numerical values, uh, 10 meters per second in the positive going direction, but then you have a minus 9.8 meters per second squared times uh, 4.22 seconds, you end up with a minus 31 meters per second. What does that mean? That means that it's going down, that the uh, final y velocity is going downward to the rate of 31.3 meters per second. Um, and let's use this component with the horizontal component, x sub f equals v sub, vx sub final equals vx sub initial equals 7.3 meters per second to find the speed of the stone at t equals um, 4.22 seconds. Um, so the v final, you take the square root of the horizontal component, the, ho the square root of the horizontal component squared plus the uh, vertical component squared, and you're gonna end up with 35.8 meters per second. Uh, okay. Uh, and then, oops, I'm sorry. Uh, finalize, is it reasonable that the y component of the final velocity is negative? Um, is it reasonable that the fi final speed is larger than the initial speed of 20 meters per second? Well, let's answer that. Yes, it is It is reasonable that it's negative because it's going downward. And it is uh, reasonable that it's greater than 20 meters per second because it, it should have been 20 meters per second when it reached the same level that it was thrown at, but now it's increasing, and it's increasing with the gravitational acceleration. Uh, so those are indeed reasonable. Uh, now, what if a horizontal wind is blowing in the same direction as the stone is thrown, and it causes the stone to have a horizontal acceleration component of 0.5 meters per second squared? Which part of this example, A or B, will have a different answer? Uh, Okay, recall that the motions in the x and y directions are independent. Therefore, the horizontal wind cannot affect the vertical motion. The vertical motion determines the time of the projectile in the air. So the answer to A does not change. Time does not change. It's still 4.22 um, seconds. 
The wind causes the horizontal velocity component to increase with time, so the final speed will be larger in part B, taking AX equals 5, 0.5 meters per second squared. Um, we get uh, uh, VX final equals 19.4 meters per second, and V final equals 36.9 uh, meters per second. Um, so the final speed will be larger than the uh, 35.8 that we got in the previous section. 36.9 is larger. Okay. Now, a ski jumper leaves the ski track moving in the horizontal direction with a speed of 25 meters per second as shown in the figure. The landing, the landing incline below her falls off with a slope of 35 degrees. Where does she land on the incline? Okay, let's conceptualize this. Um, we can conceptualize this problem based on memories of observing winter ski jumping comp competitions. We estimate the skier to be airborne for perhaps four seconds to travel a distance of about 100 meters hor horizontally. We should expect the value of D, the distance traveled along the incline, to be of the same order of magnitude. We categorize the problem as one of, the, of a particle and projectile motion. As with other projectile motion problems, we use the particle under constant velocity model for the horizontal motion and the particle under constant acceleration model for the vertical motion. Okay. Let's analyze it. It is convenient to select the beginning of the jump as the origin. The initial velocity components are VXI equals 25 meters per second and VYI equals zero. From the right triangle in the figure, we see that the, that the uh, jumpers X and Y coordinates at the starting point are given by the equation shown here. Uh, X final equals D cosine, D cosine phi and Y final equals uh, 2D sine phi. Um, that's not what it shows here. It shows there as, as minus D sine phi. Uh, what should it be? It's, yeah, there's no T. I think that, that's an error in the, the notes here. Uh, the, this is correct. Um, so uh, express the coordinates of the jumper as a function of time using the particle under constant velocity model for X. The position equation for the, from the particle under constant acceleration model for y. Uh, so we get uh, x sub x sub final equals v x sub i t equals two. Um, those are the different equations. X sub final equals v x i t d cosine phi equals v x i t, and y final equals v i vyi t minus one half gt squared, and that becomes uh, d or d sine theta equals one half g minus one half gt squared. Um, okay, solve equation two for t and substitute the result into equation four. So we're gonna uh, that d cosine phi equals vxi t. We're going to solve that for t, so t should be equal to d cosine phi divided by vxi. Oops, I'm sorry, wrong, wrong direction. Okay. Um, okay, solve equation 2 for t and substitute the result into equation 4. So the t is equal to d cosine phi divided by v6 up vx initial. We put that into equation four, d, minus d sine phi equals to minus one half, the, what we just saw for d, k, d cosine phi, d x i uh, squared. And um, we solve for d, and d equals, uh, we isolate on one side is two d x i squared sine theta over g cosine squared. I said theta, it's, I meant phi. Uh, 2 V X initial squared sine phi divided by G cosine squared phi. And if you self substitute the 
um, the, the values, uh, we, we put in the values, we get uh, um, the skier, skier lands, uh, X final, X final is equal to 89.3 meters, and Y final equals minus 62.5 meters. That is the 62.5 meters below where she launched from. Uh, now let's finalize it. Let us compare these results with our expectations. We expected the horizontal distance to be on the order of about 100 meters. And our result of 89.3 meters is indeed on this order of magnitude. It might be useful to calculate the time interval that the jumper is in the air and compare it with our estimate about, of about four seconds. Okay, suppose everything in this example is the same, except the ski jump is curved so that the jumper is protected upward at an angle from the end of the track. Is this designed better in terms of maximizing the length of the jump? Uh, let's... If the initial velocity has an upward component, the skier will be in the air longer and should therefore travel farther. Tilting the initial velocity vector upward, however, will reduce the horizontal component of the initial velocity. Therefore, angling the end of the ski track upward at a large angle may actually reduce the distance. Consider the extreme case. The skier is projected <laughs> at 90 degrees to the horizontal and simply goes up and comes back down at the end of the ski track. This argument suggests that there must be an optimal angle between 0 degrees and 90 degrees that represents a balance between making the flight time longer and the horizontal velocity component smaller. Let's find this optimal angle mathematically. The final coordinates of the skier are um, x equals vi cosine theta t and y equals vi sine theta t times minus one half gt squared. Um, by eliminating the time t between these equations and using differentiation to maximize v in terms of theta, we arrive at this equation for the angle theta that gives the maximum value of d. Uh, v sine theta t minus one half g t squared equals v i cosine theta tangent theta t. Um, since y equals x tan theta, uh, these tell us that um, t equals two v i over g times sine theta minus cosine theta tangent theta. Uh, after eliminating one factor of t from each term, simple algebra tells us that the time it takes for the skier to land, um, I may have jumped, um, may have jumped uh, an equation so that, that t is equal to t, 2 vi g sine theta minus cosine theta tan. And using the expression for x, we get x equals 2 vi initial squared divided by g and so sine theta cosine theta minus cosine squared theta tangent t okay um, we maximize the distance d by maximizing x with respect to theta this is done by setting the derivative dx d theta to zero and applying two double angle trigonometric identities um, I don't have these identities memorized, but uh, look them up in a table. Uh, this tells us that sine of two theta tangent phi is equal to cosine of two theta, which implies uh, that tau is equal to one half tangent inverse of cotine, cotangent phi equals one half 90 degrees minus phi equals 45 degrees minus one half fee. Now, what does this mean? Where am I going to? Uh, this is the last slide. Okay. For the slope angle in the figure, phi equals 35 degrees. Um, this equation results in an optimal launch angle of theta equal 27.5 degrees for a slope angle of phi equals zero degrees. Um, for a slope angle of zero degrees, of theta v equals zero degrees, which represents a horizontal plane, this equation gives an optimal launch angle of theta equal 45, as we would expect. All right, uh, 45 degrees, uh, here's that same figure that we 
looked at the complementary angles. Okay, this ends our discussion of projectile motion. We will next discuss section 4.4 .4, analysis model, particle under uniform circular motion.